So security. Uh, last year, we launched the um, uh, secure elements, but security in LoRaWAN is multiple things. It's secure boot. That means that when the device wakes up, it should check whether the firmware is actually uh, uh, signed by the device maker. Also, when a new firmware comes in, you have to check whether uh, the firmware is, is from the device maker and not from um, somebody in the middle. And then there are two specific LoRaWAN things, so storing the root keys and performing LoRaWAN cryptographic operations. And if you forget one of these four things, then actually still your security is pretty much broken. And today, um, in LoRaWAN, uh, without uh, proper security measures in place, there is, a, there is a, a group trust between device makers, contract manufacturers, distributors, networks, applications, IoT platforms, and device owners, because they typically, they, are all, they all have to play well together to keep the entire LoRaWAN deployment secure. So if you design a solution that um, decouples this, uh, you have to think about all these different actors and see what they need and still make it uh, usable. And also, so decoupling the trust relation, and second, also, it has to work at scale. Uh, security solutions shouldn't be too costly, shouldn't be too big, shouldn't cost too much power, uh, and it should allow for transfer of ownership, because if you have uh, devices here in this building, for example, and if you sell the building, um, the new owner wants to have access to this data as well. So the secure element helps with that. Um, and last year when we announced this, we got a lot of feedback from the uh, LoRaWAN community. Uh, positive, a lot of positive, but also quite some negative comments because people thought that we were building a lock-in. Um, and so I'm very happy that this morning we could announce that there are more secure, ele secure element vendors. Uh, that are joining in, uh, so you have a choice, uh, as well as there will be multiple uh, joint servers, and we will allow for offloading your security keys from our joint server to your own joint server if you want that. You're on your own, on security-wise, but we support extracting the root keys of your secure elements if you really want that. So how does device claiming work? Um, what we did between our joint server and um, the secure element vendor is to exchange uh, master keys with which uh, we can derive session keys for each device. And to make it really easy is that a device, is, if you buy secure elements, you get a manifest, which is a proof of ownership that the secure elements are yours. And you can upload that manifest in our joint server and that way you can claim your devices. Once you claim the devices, you can add parameters, you can say what the LoRaWAN versions are, things like that. And then you can print a QR code or you can generate another security code or whatever that you give as a device maker that you give to, your, uh, to the buyers of your device. And that way they can claim the device uh, and they can activate it in their account. There is no transportation of security keys involved and this works for all the devices that, all the device makers that we showed this morning on stage, um, even if they don't use a secure element. But this is how this claiming principle works. So this is also where the QR code app comes in. You don't have to use it. You can also enter the keys. You can use APIs, things like that. Um, but we want to make it really easy, but yet still secure. 